Okay, so is this problem set up? You know, the, the sketch is optional. But say I label my given points, ordered pair 6, 5, I'll let that be A, ordered pair negative 3, 2, I'll let that be B, and then 9, negative 4, I'll let that be C. If I label that and I do make an attachment to the drawing down here, let's see, 6, 5 would be in the first quadrant, so this would be A. Uh, negative 3, 2 would be in the second quadrant, so that point would be B, leaving C down here. <coughs> like we were discussing, you want to find the distance of every side because you want to figure out what the perimeter is. So it doesn't matter where we start. If I start with, say, A, B here, I've got my points for A and B right here. I know what the distance formula is. The distance formula equals the square root of the difference in the x is squared plus the difference in the y is squared. So say I subtract from second point here, b, to first point there, a. Take my x's, negative 3 minus 6. Square that. Same order for my y's. Take 2, subtract 5. Square that. That'll give me the distance for side a, b. Calculating this out. Well, let's see, this is going to be 9 squared, right, or negative 9 squared, so that's going to be 81. And this is going to be negative 3 squared, which will be 9. Take 81 and 9, add it together, we're going to get the square root of 90. 90, not a perfect square, but something we could break down, right? Distance is going to equal, if you break this down, what's it come out to be? root 10, right? Because you got 9 times 10 there. Square root of 9, 3. Take that out. 10's left over. So 3 root 10 is this side. Now we need to do the same thing for the other two sides. So if I go to, say, AC next. AC, this side. Here's point A. Here's point C. Finding the distance. Let's condense this a little bit. You're taking your x's, you got 9 minus 6, we know that's 3. We're taking 3, we're squaring that, we're getting 9. Taking my y's, so second point to first point here, negative 4 minus 5 is negative 9, negative 9 squared is 81. Well, that's going to work out the same way, isn't it? Got the square root of 90 again. So 3 root 10 here, could label my drawing. So one of these latter questions talks about the triangle being isosceles. Kind of has that look, doesn't it? Got two congruent sides. Let's figure out the distance for BC now. Distance for BC, these two points here and here. Distance is going to equal square root of. Subtracting my x's, if I go c back to b, it'd be 9 minus the negative 3, so that'd be plus 3, or 12. 12 squared would be 144. Plus, subtract your y's, negative 4 minus 2 is negative 6. Negative 6 squared, 36. So this distance is going to equal the square root of, it looks like, 180. And that can be broken down, right? What's the largest perfect square that goes into 180, you know? 36. 36 times 5, right? Square root of 36 is 6, so we got 6 root 5. So we apply the distance formula to find the length of all the sides of the triangle. First thing we're asked to find here. In this question is perimeter. So perimeter, we know we're just adding up all the sides. My perimeter is going to equal, we've got a couple of like radicals here we can add together. You got the 3 root 10, the 3 root 10, that's 6 root 10. And then you got that other 6 root 5. So perimeter is 6 root 10 plus 6. 
root 5. Now, what else is asked? We're asked if this is isosceles. It's isosceles, right? We've got two congruent sides. And then we're also asked if this is a right triangle. You remember how to determine if something's a right triangle? You remember you can take your two shortest sides, square those, add them together, and see how that compares to the longest side square. Remember doing that? So if you take your 3 root 10, square that, add that to 3 root 10, square that, we're trying to see how that compares to the 6 root 5 squared. Now if you think about how all these radicals have worked out, how you got to this point in the first place, this 3 root 10 came from 90, right? There's 90 under the root, so I'm squaring that square root. Root disappears, you got 90 left. Same thing here, and then this side, that was 180. So obviously that's all equivalent, meaning it is a right triangle. So it's an isosceles right triangle. All right, so like the last one, if it helps, you want to draw things out. So you can at least see the positioning of all of our, our lettering here. We've got a segment, segment FG where M is positioned as the midpoint. Now we do have a midpoint formula. All right, you guys have that written down, but I'm gonna put it up here for convenience. What we know, as far as these points are concerned, we know the midpoint and we know G. We're trying to find coordinates for F. So depending on how you want to go about labeling things, you know, maybe F over here could be the X sub 1, Y sub 1 idea. If that's true for my midpoint, I know the X coordinate at the midpoint is negative 1 meaning this part of the midpoint formula must equal negative 1. Now, if I'm letting f be the x sub 1, y sub 1 stuff, then it makes sense to let g be the x sub 2, y sub 2 stuff. So I can start plugging in some, some values here to this formula. Like the x coordinate g, I could plug in for x sub 2, that x coordinate being 2, and I'd have x sub 1 plus 2 over 2 equals negative 1. So there's the x-coordinate part of my midpoint formula set equal to the actual x-coordinate for the midpoint. And I used a value from over here to assist in plugging in some other information. As long as I'm setting this all up, I could do the same thing for this y sub 1 plus y sub 2 over 2 part. I know that this equals 3, and y sub 2 would be the negative 2 from over here, so y sub 1 plus, we could just say minus 2 over 2 equals the y coordinate at the midpoint, which is 3. So now i got a couple equations where if I solve, I can figure out my ordered pair that represents f. I'd have my x sub 1, I'd have my y sub 1. So solving. Multiply 2 over here, you get negative 2, right? You get negative 2 over here, you're subtracting 2 over, x sub 1 is going to be negative 4. This equation, multiply 2 over, gives you 6. You'd be adding that 2 over, so y sub 1 would be 8. Coordinates for f would just be negative 4 and 8.